It's early in the morning here, but I was compelled to do this uh, video. I want to talk about breaking witchcraft spells or witchcraft attacks, however you want to put it. Spells, attacks, curses, breaking witchcraft spells. Now, you, want, you might want to share this one. A lot of people, when I talk about witchcraft, and I, and I, and I talk to folks, and they, they, um, they sort of think I'm, I'm joking around, or I'm, I'm using mystical terminology, or I'm, I'm somehow exaggerating when we talk about a spell. But you have to understand something about the spiritual realm. One of the things in the United States that gets us in trouble is that we assume that spiritual things are not real. You know, that, oh, no, that's just this, that, the third. But when you when you travel the world and you've seen things and experienced things, you know that, that there is a such thing called witchcraft. And I want to explain something to you. You know, when we talk about the word witchcraft, witchcraft, it's a combination of two words, isn't it? Witch, that's someone that practices magic or uses, implores the power of evil spirits to control another person. It can also mean someone who manipulates or controls. And the word craft means uh, device or technology or skill. So a witch, witchcraft is the skill or the technology or the practice, listen to me, a craft is a practice. The practice of using the power of evil spirits to affect another person, to either influence them or to control them. Another form of, of witchcraft or another term for witchcraft is sorcery. And so I want to show you something uh, that, that, that you may not have thought about. The Bible speaks of witchcraft, actually, in Galatians 5. It says that witchcraft is, is named as one of the works of the flesh, the works of the flesh. Witchcraft, which, which actually the Greek word for witchcraft in the, New, in the New Testament Bible is the word pharmakia, pharmakia. The word pharmakia is, is a word where we get the word pharmacy from. Uh, pharmacists in the, the ancient days would use concoctions in order to affect people. Drugs, drugs, uh, a pharmacist, one who deals in drugs, one who deals in materials or things that can alter the state of consciousness. So when we talk about spells, witchcraft spells, is when someone speaks, someone who practices witchcraft speaks a curse or they speak in such a way that influences another person that that causes a person to be spellbound to use to use the 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 employing of evil to speak a curse to speak something that that literally controls another you know you've heard recently that a group of witches have got together to to cast a spell on the president and you know, Paul asked the question he says who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth but i want to show you how to break spells and, and now this is no joke because there are many believers watching me now. You found that you've gone through an unusual level of warfare. I mean, you're just, you're struggling with stuff that doesn't even make any sense. And one of the first evidences that there's been witchcraft released against you is that you become mind bound. Somebody ought to write that down. Mind bound because spells are mind binding. The purpose of a spell is to bind up your thinking, your rational thinking, so that you do not think properly anymore. You see, back in the days, you know, they would talk about casting a spell. It means that someone was bewitched, seduced. They were um, spellbound. They, they they were mind binded. They they couldn't think properly. They would they, they they would not function the same way anymore because they had this this demonic influence working in their life. This another another word for it is when they talk about um uh when 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 someone does an incantation of some sort or they use a, a demonic series of words or or spoken rituals to cast a demonic attack or a shadow on another person's mind now 
Well, what happened back in the day is that when, when a witch would use this technology against someone, the person would literally be under an enchantment, an enchantment, an enchantment. They would, they would operate almost like in a dream state, and they wouldn't think properly. They, they would, uh, you know, have this vision, you know. Uh, they would call it an apparition. The person would see something that was not real. Now, we've seen many cases of this all throughout history um, where someone will do something and they'll say, I can't believe I just did that. I, I don't know what, where was I. You don't remember where you were. You don't remember why you did it. I, I don't who, who, what was that? I'll give an example of it. Drinking alcohol. The Bible talks about um, not, not being drunk with wine. Now, we call alcohol spirits. And one of the reasons we call it spirits is because there are spiritual influences attached to alcohol. That's why a woman can go to a club, get drunk, and sleep with men and not even remember what she did. She'll wake up the next night and say, what, how, what did I do? I can't. Because she was in an altered state of consciousness. It's called being inebriated. It's called being drunken. Listen to me very carefully. This is why under most laws, both English law and European law for the most part, in English law, if a woman is under the influence of alcohol when she engages in a sexual act with another man, she cannot be held liable for that act because she was not in the right state of mind when she did it. I want to show you something that's powerful. So I'm going to pray in a minute, but I want to explain something to you. Many of you have been under this spiritual attack of witchcraft, and it's real. But I want to give you good news. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And I'm not talking about some hocus pocus. I'm not talking about some, 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 you know, uh, some, some phony little stuff. But I'm talking about there's some of you listening to me even now. And from the beginning of this year till now, you've been trying to figure out why has the attack against me increased? Why has there been so much spiritual opposition? Why have I not been able to think properly? I mean, you, 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 you literally haven't even been able to concentrate on anything. You've been distracted. You've been distressed. You've been emotionally frustrated. And you've never attributed to a spiritual attack. But that's exactly what it is. And it's against your mind. It's against your, your thinking. It's against your thoughts so that you can't function properly. You must understand the assignment of witchcraft is to divert you from the purpose and plan of God. The Bible says in Galatians 5, who hath bewitched you so that you shall not obey the truth. So you must understand that the first assignment of witchcraft against the believer is to get you not to obey God's word, to get you to deviate from truth, to bring you into deception. And there are many ways this happens. For example, there are what we call points of contact. There are some times when people who are demonically influenced will try to get something to you as a point of contact to connect with you demonically. That's why I don't let everyone, uh, 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 don't, don't let everything into your home. You know, when I travel, I travel from Africa, God began to warn me, you know, I would bring stuff back, all these artifacts and all this kind of stuff. And God would say, no, 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 don't bring that into your house because what you're doing is you're allowing an influence into your house. Now I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not superstitious, but the Bible says, give him no place. Come on. Give him no place. Don't give the devil room to do anything in your life. I'm going to pray in just a moment. But I want to show you that many of you have been under an attack. That's why you've been saying, man, why am I going back to habits that I know I've been delivered from? I mean, you've been walking in deliverance for years. And all, all of a sudden now, in this year of your life, as God began to promise you all these things, all these things begin to bombard your mind, bombard your thinking, and you find yourself arrested in thinking because you are under the influence. You see, this is why many times 
A spell could be as simple as someone speaking evil of you, someone gossiping about you, or using their influence to negatively affect someone else concerning you. This is also a form of witchcraft, where someone is bewitched. You see, because the enemy knows, the enemy knows that we are creatures of communication. We are speaking spirits. And this is why everything that operates in the spiritual realm operates according to the spoken word. A witch never thinks a curse, they speak a curse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you must understand this last thing. The blessing of this is this, that the blessing is greater than the curse. I want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I come against every attack of witchcraft. I come against every assignment of the devil. I come against every incantation, every spell, every manipulation, every curse spoken against your people to try to stagnate them, to try to confuse them, to try to bewilder them, to try to discourage them, to try to stop them, to try to block. Oh, you better pray with me now. To try to block them, to try to prevent them from walking in the assignment of God. I cancel every assignment of witchcraft. I break every spell. I release your people from every bewitchment, from every power of darkness, either insidious or obvious. I come against it now. I break every arrow of the enemy and I abolish the assignment of demons to attack your people insidiously, to attack your people in darkness. And I come against witchcraft. I declare that, that, that no weapon form, no technology used by the kingdom of darkness that has been concocted to hurt the people of God shall prosper in the name of Jesus. There's a woman watching me that your husband has been seduced by another woman and it's not a natural thing. This is a spirit of witchcraft. I break it right now. I break every marriage destroying spirit. I break every uh, relationship destroying spirit. I break every ministry destroying spirit. And I come against every assignment of Jezebel, of Delilah, of Ath Ath Athaliah, and any other demonic force that will try to manipulate and control the servants of God and keep them from doing what God has called them to do. I come against discouragement. I come against sickness in your body. I come against fear in your mind. I come against anxiety. I come against high blood pressure and I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity that's been bombarding you over the last month, over the last two months, over the last year, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that spell of suicide that makes you feel like giving up. That's not you. You need to cancel that. You need to stop that. You need to block that in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of prayerlessness that's keeping you from being able to pray, keeping you from being able to fast, keeping you from being able to get in the word because the enemy knows that when you get in the word, when you begin to fast and pray and you, you begin to expose the kingdom of darkness in the mighty name of of Jesus. I'm telling you, you better share this with somebody because we're exposing the devil. We're snatching the covers off of the enemy in Jesus mighty name. You will never be bound. You will never be manipulated. You will never be seduced. And I come against the spirit of false prophecy. There's some of you watching that, 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 that you've been the victim of false prophetic words that have been used to control you, have been used to manipulate you, have been used to keep you out of the perfect will of God, that those in leadership have spoken these words and they've been used to, to, to chain you to something that's not the plan of God, to keep you out of God's best for your life. I break every false prophecy. I break every word curse spoken over you. Every leader that says if you you leave this ministry, you're going to die. If you leave this ministry, you'll never be successful. If you, I curse that right now. I reverse that right now. In Jesus' name, you shall prosper. You shall live. You shall not die. You shall declare the works of the Lord and wealth and riches shall be in your house. The blessing of Abraham that makes rich and adds no sorrow shall be upon your life 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Every addiction, I come against addiction now, heroin, methamphetamines, addiction to food, addiction to abusive relationships, addiction to everything that's not God. Come on, somebody. Addiction to the religious spirit. I come against it in Jesus' name, and I command that you are loosed, you are freed, you are liberated, you are set free by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the blood of Jesus Christ. We come against every curse. We come against every spell in the mighty name of Jesus and we cover every leader, every leader who has been attacked or has been targeted by witchcraft. Every leader who the enemy has tried to target, who the enemy has tried to get to fall, who the enemy has tried to get to fail, we break every enchantment. We break every work of the evil one. We break every work of darkness and we command the people of God to snap into their senses and to think clearly about what God is saying. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, share this with as many people as you know. Share this with as many people as you know with the hashtag freedom.